James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is September 13th, 2023, 3 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had something hit our electromagnetic field and it appears to be interacting with our electromagnetic field for the last eight hours. Although the spikes aren't very substantial, we do have spikes up to almost 200 hertz. These small spikes here could mean that we have a lot of Schumann resonance activity. Let's take a look. This goes through 20 UTC time. All right, heading over to the Schumann resonance itself. It looks like we've got some activity ongoing here. And it looks like it also has been ongoing. Well, this is running two hours behind real time. This ends right around 1800 UTC time when it's really closer to 20 UTC time currently. Now, we are seeing significant spikes in the Schumann resonance all the way up through what we can see 1800 on the six day comparison. I'm sure we'll get some real time data here. We had activity all the way back at 10 UTC time, 3 a.m. in the morning central time, and that's been ongoing. These are really considered normal spikes in the Schumann resonance down here around 7 to 8 hertz. Right before, well, about 1330 UTC time, we see the significant spikes starting. That's going to be about 630 a.m. central time here in the U.S., we see these spikes on and off since that time period. And again, some of them look like they could have exceeded 105 hertz. It is questionable. They're not very solid and strong, but these are very high frequency, high vibrational spikes. Now, we hadn't seen any activity in the Schumann residence in quite some time until yesterday. We did cover that. All of a sudden today, it's been off the charts. We had an episode earlier in the day, first four hours of the day, or the first three and a half hours of the day, uh, and that morphed into a smaller signature here with spikes again off the chart here at about 1330 UTC time. Now this is starting here at about 2 UTC time and going through to about 630 UTC time. So about four and a half hours off the charts. The charts ending at 50 hertz here. And we see the same thing happening here. Now we're going to find out what's causing this. When we take a look at the geophone, it looks like that we should have spikes at every hour of the day. We are not seeing those spikes, but we see the earlier episode here, much stronger than the current episode. And it looks like... 16, 17, 1800, we're missing about two hours of geophone data as well. I did want to show you all that the six day comparison does take us up to real time here, about 20 UTC time, four hours left in the day here, and we're still seeing significant spiking up to about 20 to 25 hertz. Heading over to the amplitudes, we can see the three incidents starting yesterday into this morning and the one we're currently in does not look like it's going away it actually looks like it's moving towards the upside we'll keep an eye on this obviously a lot of people are uncomfortable with schumann resonance spikes in this range okay as far as agitators that might be causing these large spikes in the schumann resonance well first off I'm going to prove that our cavity has collapsed after the space weather hit it. But in the meantime, our LHC at CERN, our Large Hydron Collider, is back up and operational. And they're filling the beams or injecting the beams and ions currently for their first experiment in some time. I would say that is bad news. You can see that the power here was off the charts, off 15 TeV. Then, folks, if we take a look 
at the activity near the monitoring station. This is a lightning storm right here. The monitor station is in this area. We'll zoom in. This is Italy here, Sicily here. And we're going to zoom in. Now, nothing's currently over the modeling station, but this thunderstorm's probably close enough to trigger these geophones. And you can see there's smaller storms everywhere. And there is the modeling station right there, ladies and gentlemen. So, taking a look at the overall environment here and the storm that looks like it just passed through with lightning throughout. We can say that a thunderstorm or lightning storm could have been a possible agitator as well. Why do I say agitator? Well, I say agitator, ladies and gentlemen, because the Schumann residence never spiked over 37 hertz until 2017 and has been spiking higher and higher and higher ever since. With that said, the resting Schumann residence should be about 7.83. Humans and other animals have actually been observed to operate at better physical and mental levels up to about 14 hertz as long as they're able to go back to a lower level sometimes much lower than the 7.83 to rest and rejuvenate but anything over 14 hertz has been shown to be detrimental towards living tissue and humans and again since 2017 we first saw spikes up to 50, then 100, then 150, then 200 hertz. Now we've seen spikes over 200 hertz. What's going on, folks? I believe that we're in a pole shift and our magnetosphere is collapsing and disappearing. And what's happening is, is when these lightning storms or agitators occur, they bounce off the lowest region. It's called the D region of our atmosphere. When they used to pass through the D region and bounce off the E or F region of the atmosphere. Since they're bouncing off such a low part of our atmosphere, they return with more velocity and power hitting the geophones, causing these huge spikes that we've been seeing. And since our cavity is collapsing more and more each year, the spikes grow each year. Now, we had some plasma hit earlier in the day. This was the third of three M flares that I believe uh, occurred on the 11th, although NASA says that they actually occurred on the 8th now. What a total joke. So you'll also see that once the space weather is over, we completely lose our shields here. Uh, the pink means our shields are in the negative here. Another good way to understand that is our cavity or magnetosphere cavity has collapsed here after taking a beating yesterday. So any type of agitator would indicate or cause high spiking of the Schumann residence. If our shields were up here in the blue, you would see no Schumann residence spiking whatsoever, even with lightning over the station. You might see spikes up to 20 or 30 hertz, but that would be all of it. That would be the extent of it i.e. anything that was recorded before 2017 when our magnetosphere really started to, well, deplete and our cavity started to dissipate or collapse, causing these agitators to bounce off the lowest level in our atmosphere, the D region, and then back towards the geophones, giving us the large spikes in the geophones. Now, I actually had to figure this out, but once I did, Turns out there's hundreds of papers already written that cover it. With that said, God bless you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.